about it. <laughs> yeah, at, this time, at this time, we want to uh, welcome all those, uh, all those who are joining us online and uh, watching on our YouTube channel. So we're so glad that you're here as well. Uh, what we're doing this time is, uh, since this is Independence Day, the 4th of July, uh, we're going to uh, uh, do some patriotic hymns, uh, America followed by, America the Beautiful followed by America. So I'd ask all of you who are here, you can do this as well as you're at home if you'd like to stand up as well as we say.
be reading today from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 22. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's palace and successfully completed all that he had planned on doing in the house of the Lord and in his palace. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attentive to the prayer offered in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house and my name, that, that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. And as for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, even to do according to all, to all that I have commanded you, and you will keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne as I have covenant with your father David, saying, You shall not lack a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot you from my land which I have given you. And this house which I have consecrated for my name I will cast out on my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And for this house which was exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done this? To this land and to this house and they will say because they forsook the Lord the God of their fathers who brought them from the land of Egypt and they adopted other gods and worshiped them and served them therefore he has brought all this adversity on them Amen. the Lord Yes, on this Independence Day, um, if my math is correct, this 245th um, anniversary of the celebration of our founding, um, we truly are blessed. Um, this is a great nation, still a great nation, still the greatest nation, I am certainly convinced, in the world today. And we just see that by the fact you know, where does everybody want to go that live in these other nations? They want to come here. You know, so, so we truly are blessed. We are obviously also a nation with many problems and issues as well. And, um, you know, we, we have our struggles as a nation. I don't want to overplay those and, and be alarmist because I'm not alarmist, but, but we do have problems. And, and, and I want us to today to sort of, we're going to take a step today, a small step, to, uh, to solve some of the problems in this country. And you'll see how that uh, comes out a little bit later. But first I just want to make two quick points um, this morning. And the first one is this. Our nation relies on Christian morality. Think about that. Our nation relies on Christian morality. Our founding fathers realized this. Let me read to you some quotes. The first is from the second president of the United States, John Adams. No relation that I know of. <laughs> uh, 
He said, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. George Washington, our first president, said this, while we, zealously, while we are zealously performing the duties of good citizens and soldiers, we certainly ought not to be inattentive to the higher duties of religion. To the distinguished character of patriot, it should be our highest glory to add the more distinguished character of Christian. And James Madison, the fourth president, and this is just an amazing thing he says, we have staked the whole future of American civilization not on the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future of all our political institutions upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. So these founding fathers realized, and they realized just how important it was to have a moral nation. That if we had an immoral nation, if we were full of evil people, those evil people could take over. They could elect people who would be um, in power, and they could do whatever they wanted, really. I mean, granted, our Constitution, our country, we have safeguards for the minority. But if there are enough immoral people, they can override those safeguards. And you might say, well, there's a Supreme Court, sure, but they could get a Supreme Court that was the same way. And maybe the rights of the minority would be in jeopardy. And the founding fathers realized that this Christian or this morality comes from faith. And of course, for them, of course, it was Christian faith. And how important Christian faith is. So our country relies on a certain morality uh, for there to be. Our country also relies on prayer, on prayer as well. Um, I'm reminded by what Paul wrote to his protege Timothy. We have it recorded in First, First Timothy chapter two. He says, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings, well, we might say for presidents, for kings and all who are in high positions so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So when our country has struggled, what have we done? We've turned to prayer. December 7th, 1941 was a day that will live in infamy, as President Roosevelt said, right? But what we don't as often remember is that on January 1st, 1942, FDR called for a day of prayer after Pearl Harbor. Now this one we might remember, September 11th, 2001. The tragedy of 9-11. One of the first things that President Bush did was call for a day of prayer for Friday, September 14th, 2001. That's what our nation has done. We come back to prayer. Now, uh, I'm gonna give you an example, true, not from our nation, but uh, from Britain. The year is 1940, it's May 1940. British and French troops are in France protecting France from Hitler and the German onslaught. When Hitler attacks, I believe the date was May the 10th, 1940, and he just pushed those troops through France, all the way back to the English Channel Dunkirk. at a place we know as Dunkirk. These troops were cut off, they were surrounded with the English Channel at their back, and it was disaster waiting to happen. There were nearly 400,000 troops there. The nation of Britain started to pray. In fact, Winston Churchill, the new prime minister, called for a day of prayer for Sunday, May the 26th. And the nation prayed. Now here's what happened. Here's what happened. Actually, a couple days before, 
May the 26th, that day of prayer, a couple days before, an interesting thing happened. Hitler stopped. He stopped his troops. They just stopped attacking. I guess they said it was to regroup, you know, but he stopped. And then a couple days after, I think it was May the 28th, if I remember correctly, on May the 28th, the Luftwaffe was getting ready to just bomb all those troops, and guess what? The weather was bad. Luftwaffe couldn't fly. The next day, May the 29th, was Wednesday. And a funny thing happened that day, too. The normally turbulent English Channel was really calm. It was really flat. And that allowed, as we know, everybody who owned a boat in southern England to take that boat across the English Channel to pick up whatever troops could be picked up. And over the course of the next several days, 330,000 troops were rescued. How amazing is that? What a coincidence, right? Well, not according to this little pamphlet that I came upon some years ago. It was actually written in 1942 in England because of the weather. That says, yeah, it was the weather, but it was really God. It was really God who made all those things possible. It was God who made sure the Luftwaffe couldn't fly. It was God who made sure the seas were calm so they could. That's what we do. That's what our nation relies on. Our nation relies on prayer. So that's what we're going to do in just a, just a couple minutes. We're going to pray for our nation. And... Uh, but first, I just want to remind you what Jean read, um, that passage, because this will be important. Second Chronicles 7. Now, what's going on here, just so you know, Solomon has built a temple. We know it's a Solomon's temple. He built a temple. He prayed over the temple, and now God is responding. And God says, God knows that the people of Israel are not always going to do what they should do. So God makes this promise to them in verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal, heal their land. Now obviously God was speaking of the Israelites. But I think we have every right to believe that if we come before God in humility, right, humbly praying to God, seeking His face, and turning from confessing and turning from our wickedness to God, will heal our land as well. And so that's what we will do. It'll work sort of like this. I have a couple areas that I'll bring up and I will pray for. And then we'll have a time of silent prayer that will allow you to silently lift up prayers before Almighty God as well. And then we'll move on to the next area of prayer. So let us just get into a, an attitude of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do come to you on this, our Independence Day, so thankful for this nation. So thankful for all the blessings we have in this nation. So thank you that we can just freely meet to worship you, which is not true in many places in the world. We're just so thankful, Lord. And once again, we just are grateful for your blessings. Blessings upon blessings that you have given to us. And we're so grateful indeed. But we also know, Lord, that this is not this is not a guarantee. Our nation is not guaranteed to survive. But it will take a people who are moral people. It will take people of Christian faith to make sure this nation does survive. So we pray now, Father, 
We pray for there to be great revival across this nation. That many people would come to know you. That your Holy Spirit would be poured out on many. And many would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. That lives would be transformed. That people, ourselves included, would confess to God and, and ask for God's forgiveness. For all those times and those things that we have done. And sometimes it's just the things we haven't done. The times we haven't cared about what other people are going through or suffering. And we ask for forgiveness, Lord, for ourselves and for our nation. When our nation is acting badly. And we pray for revival. Father, at this time we lift up our prayer silently to you. Father God, we just pray for our governmental leaders who ask for us to pray for those who are in authority, positions of authority. So we lift up our president, President Biden, right now. We lift up our Congress. That what they do is, first of all, that they will work together on the things that are most important, right? And that they work together to do things that glorify and honor you. That the decisions they make would be in accordance with your word. And that would help heal our nation. We pray for those, not just on the federal level, on the state level. We pray for Governor Wolf, our state house and state senate. And we pray for those on the local level as well. Our county, township. Uh, county supervisors and township supervisors as well. For the tasks that they're called to do, may they do it, take it not lightly, because it is an awesome task, but may they also do it and take that task as a calling from you. That the work that the work that they would do would honor you. Father, we lift up our prayers and individually different representatives of our government to you now. And Father, where there are divisions in our nation, we pray for healing. We pray for healing across racial lines, across social and economic lines, across political lines. Father, help us focus on the things that are more important. Help us focus on the things that bring us together, not the things that divide us. And Father God, help us focus on you as the one who created us and who blesses us as a nation. Father God, here as we lift up our prayers for healing to you.
And Father, we pray for economic prosperity in our nation as well. As we come out of COVID, we pray, Father, that uh, our economy will do well, that many people would find jobs, would take jobs and find jobs in this nation and that we would be nearly fully employed. We pray for this Lord, not so that we can be greedy and get more stuff. We pray for this with a proper attitude that says may we have prosperity so that we can help others. Help others in our nation and help nations around the world who need help. So, Father, we lift up our prayers to you silently for economic prosperity. And Father, we pray for all those who make, make, make all this possible. We pray for our military men and women. We lift them up to you. So thankful for all those who continue to sign up to serve. And pray more will continue to sign up to serve. Just lead and guide them in their task. And what they do will bring peace. No more anger and hatred, but peace. Help them do the job they need to do. And at this time, Father, we lift up, silently lift up our military to you, perhaps even the names of those who are currently serving. Father God, thank you for listening to our prayers for our nation. We love this nation. And we know it's, we love it warts and all, you know, and, and we know it has quite a few wars. But we know, Lord, that as we come more and more to you, as we see revival in this nation, a new great awakening taking place, empowered by your Holy Spirit, People will change in this nation, will change for the better. So we continue to pray, Father, for all these things, and we especially pray for revival, so that this nation may continue for many, many, many years to come. Praise be to God for our nation. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. So, um, you know, I, I realized that we, we talk about Independence Day, right? And uh, the only way we're going to remain independent, because that's what this day is all about, right? The only way we're going to remain independent is if we're dependent. If we're dependent on God. That's what this nation means. So maybe stay dependent on God. I urge you to continue to pray. For God and, and pray specifically for things. You know, something that's going on, something's going through the state legislature or the, the U.S. Congress or something.
Pray for those things. The good things that they would pass, the bad things that they wouldn't, the things we're not sure about that they would have the wisdom to know. So maybe we pray for those things as well. So at this time, I think we're going to uh, continue with that great hand, God of the Ages. You may stand. Thank you. 